If we zoom out a little on this design, you can see that here is a driveway. Let's imagine that the designer, you as the designer, wanted to indicate some uh, some paving, some rock paving that will constitute the driveway. Even though CAD software can generate patch patterns, paving patterns really quickly and easily, we think it's a good idea just to restrict your hatching to a, a relatively small area. So you might draw a polyline, let's select it now, just roughly indicating a zone in the area uh, of paving. So let's now hatch it. So draw and hatch, and we are asked to, asked to pick the object, and then hit the right mouse button. GCAD Plus enables you to load any hatch pattern you might be able to find on the internet. Not all work well, but a number of them do. Here's one I've found called River Rock, and I've loaded it now, and I've set a hatch pattern scale of 100, so my density is a half. Now, the units here don't mean anything in the real world. You just adjust the scale. Let me just go back now to, say, 10. See how the density increases. So we'll, we'll make that, say, 200 as a guess, and we'll OK it. What that does is put that sort of hatch pattern into the zone. At this point, you might zoom in and just select the edge of the polyline and right click and erase it. So now there's the hatch pattern enclosed in that zone. So to me that just indicates quite nicely that the driveway is to be paved with that particular pattern. You can use, if you click draw and boundary, you can use the boundary command to create a boundary like so and then close it and you can hatch that boundary as well. And I've drawn one over here. So let's hatch it with the same pattern. So I'm just trying to demonstrate the difference between boundary and polyline hatching. So we'll pick hatching. We can pick the boundary line and apply exactly the same hatching pattern to it. Now when we zoom in, the difference here is if we can select the hatch pattern we can move the hatch pattern around to get the sort of effect that we want. So we might want something like that. You can see that I've got objects snap on and a number of alternatives. So there's our hatch pattern. I'm not sure now when we delete the boundary, I think we'll delete the whole lot. So we erase. No, it still stays. So that's that's fine. So now you have two different uh, zones hatched to indicate that the driveway will be patched with that particular pattern. And you can move the pattern around. You can still see the, the boundary there, even though we have, in fact, deleted it. I, th I would suggest a good idea to put the boundary on a layer that you turn the boundary layer off, but put the hatching on a different layer because you may want to tweak that boundary at a later time. But that's up to you to choose the particular method that you want. Let me remove this now. And we might even pick the car at this point and just move it. Whoops. I'll undo that. The reason it jumped in position is I still had my object snap running. So let me go here and turn object snap off, clear it, clear it all. And now I should be able to pick the car and just move it by like so. So I get a, a better arrangement, I think. So that's hatching, B boundary hatching, and just trying to lightly dress your drawing up rather than use the power of CAD to apply very large hatching to massive hatching over big areas. That tends to overpower the design. Let's move into the layout and just see how it is all looking. We have a problem with the yellow colour that moves around there, and uh, but that can be fixed up at a later time. Remember you do the majority of your drafting in model space and only move to paper space at a later time. What I'll now do is pick that polyline, change its colour back to by layer, and now when I go into the layout space, 
I've got a much better arrangement. I can now see those boundary points.